Hey guys, I want to do a quick video uh, to follow up with my tutorial that I made uh, using native instrument software to mix drums inside of Pro Tools. In this video, uh, I'm just going to uh, go through a bunch of the different kits that come with Studio Drummer and also the modern uh, drummer package as well from native instruments. I'm not going to go into too much of the mixing. If you're interested in how I'm mixing it, please check out my other video where I go into depth on how I'm using um, Contact 5, Guitar Rig um, 5, the Vintage Compressors, uh, and also the Solid Mix uh, series effects um, to mix drums. So this is just going to be a video where you hear a bunch of different sounds. Um, if you're interested in the libraries, hopefully it gives you an opportunity to hear how they sound if you're going to mix them rather than, uh, I know they have demos on the Native Instruments um, website that you can hear, but uh, hopefully this gives you more of a realistic idea about how you could use them if you were mixing them with uh, Pro Tools rather than just what's what uh, comes raw out of the library. So here we go. So let me show you what I've got set up. Here um, is just the, uh, the drum loop that I'm going to be using. It's a MIDI file. It has some kick, snare, hi-hat, um, crash cymbals, and toms as well. So let me switch over now to the uh, mix window. I've got uh, uh, the instruments um, sent out of contact to all these tracks. Um, again, if you want to know how to do that, check out my other video. Um, so now what I've done is I've loaded up a bunch of the kits. Um, so this is the Studio Drummer Library. This is the Sonar Kit. What I'm going to do is load these samples here. I'm going to demo this one. While those are loading, uh, I just want to point out for all of these uh, kits that I'm showing off, I've gone in and I've initialized the preset so there's uh, really no mixing going on inside of uh, Contact. It's, it's all going on uh, inside of Pro Tools instead. Um, one thing I have done is uh, with the different drums, so like the kick drum, if you look down here, I've backed off the room mic, I backed off the overhead, same with the overheads, uh, but the snare um, and the toms, I still have the, um, the gain at unity here for those. Um, and I've done this basically the same exact thing with all the kits, so they're essentially the same uh, mix coming out of contact. So that's still loading. Um, another thing I've done with the options is clicked on this curve. Um, this is just going to be a you know pop rock mix, so I want the drums hitting pretty hard. Um, finally, with the mixer, um, again, like I told you, the, the I'm really just using the uh, initial preset that doesn't have uh, much mixing going on. Uh, I've panned the toms a little bit around, and I have the same panning in the other presets as well that I'll go through. Um, I'm not using the mono mic uh, for the overhead and uh, for the kick and snare I just have a small bit of EQ going on. Um, I backed off around 300 Hertz here, four, 3 to 400 Hertz. The snare um, I backed off a little bit on the gain around maybe six or 700 um, and I backed off the bottom mic a little bit on the snare and the uh, internal or the the front mic for the kick drum and I've mapped all the things out to uh, the different tracks and Pro Tools so again if you're not familiar with how to do that check out the other video uh, now hopefully uh, we've got these loaded um, I'll let you hear how this is the sonar kit from Studio Drummer you can hear how it sounds make sure the MIDI's mapped okay here we go Alright, what I'm going to do next is, uh, with this one, there's two snares that come with it. I'm going to switch over to the other one. Uh, that takes a second to load. 
let me show you a little bit of the processing I've got going on. Uh, I've got a gate, uh, compressors, EQs on pretty much everything. That's the snare, the hi-hat, oops, that toms, hi-hat, overhead in the room. So let me play back this one now that the other snare is uh, loaded. So hopefully that gave you guys a better idea. The, the garage kit is pretty dirty sounding. It's pretty raw. Um, you know, if that's what you're going for in your uh, mixing, then it's a perfect uh, kit for you to choose. I'm going to do is uh, unload these samples now. So not taking up memory. Switch the uh, MIDI file. So it's my, uh, my MIDI loop's not triggering uh, this library. Minimize it. Open up. Uh, this other one, switch it over, let me load the samples on it. So this is a Yamaha uh, kit. Um, this is the standard kit, I'll switch over. Again, I've got the same microphone setup um, that I had in the first one. So um, I'm trying to remain consistent across all of them, so that you can just hear how the uh, hear how the drums sound. These libraries, um, each of the kits are pretty big. You know, uh, I have uh, the whole thing being stored in memory, so you guys can see how much is is being uh, loaded. Uh, and these kits coming in about half a gig. Um, that's a fair amount of samples. Um, you know, a lot of those articulations are things that I'm not necessarily using in the loop, including like a lot of different ones for the snare, side stick, um, rim shots, uh, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, if you if you want to make a pretty realistic drum performance, you can do that with these libraries. So this is the session kit. Uh, here's here we go. Now let me switch the snare over to the the other one that comes in the package. I think that's a nice thing that Native Instruments included. You only get three really uh, different drum sets, but you get a total of six different snares. And I find that um, just changing the snare up on a on a drum kit um, and in a song can can make the drum sound completely different. So here's a new snare with the same kit. So here with that one, they've uh, the two options that you get. One is a high pitch snare, the last one we were doing, that's tuned up a little bit more compared to the other one, and the other one's uh, lower. So that's a nice uh, variety for this kit. Let me load up uh, this last one. This is the uh, Pearl kit. Uh, let me load the samples here. So this is the Stadium kit. And I can definitely say uh, from listening to it, uh, this one has um, a big room sound. So if you like that on your drums, this is the kit for you to use. Um, it, it has a long reverb tail to the, to the, the ambience. Um, and I usually find that I need to uh, tone down the, the 
uh, reverb with this kit because um, it sustains for so long. But you know, if that's what your uh, your song calls for, then this is the perfect kit for that. Um, switch the MIDI over. All right, and just like the other ones, uh, same mixing setup with the mixer. I'm doing the same kind of EQing. Just they're all the same. Um, same tom painting and everything like that. Um, I did notice that when I was setting these up that these toms came in a little bit hotter than the other ones on the other kits. So I backed those off a little bit to try and keep the the uh, volume the same across the different kits. Uh, so this is done loading. I'll play it back for you and you can hear it. Cool, now I'll switch the snare over. This takes a second to load here. It's almost done. I noticed right away that this kick drum sounds really deep. Um, so that's that's a big difference compared to the other ones that were that were tight and punchy. This one's has uh, is lower and also has a longer sustain, so that's just something I noticed. Here's the other snare. All right, so that's a stadium kit. Uh, let me take the samples out, switch this MIDI over. All right, load up the next uh, kit. I'm actually gonna be moving away from the Studio Drummer Library and now into the Abbey Road's Modern Drummer Library. Uh, so this is a separate library um, from Studio Drummer that um, can be purchased or used inside of Contact. I, I own Complete 8 Ultimate, so I got all these uh, together. Um, this first kit is the Pearl kit. Let me load all the samples, switch the MIDI over. Uh, one thing I noticed about this kit when I was just setting it up is it seemed to be much quieter. Um, even if when I went over to the mixer, I turned up the kick and the snare as loud as they they were going to go. Same with the overheads in the room. Um, and the problem was it wasn't, uh, it wasn't hitting uh, the compressor in the gate. Um, uh, by a similar amount as the other ones. So um, rather than uh, changing the, the uh, thresholds and stuff like that of my, of my gate and my compressor, what I did is I added a, a gain booster from the guitar rig library here. Uh, let me turn that on for the different effects uh, to make sure that I have the same sort of sound going on, uh, same sort of signal levels going on across all the libraries. So it's the hi-hat, overhead, and room. All right, let me go back here. I bet these are loaded now. Getting close. Uh, so this is a, a Pearl kit. Um, so the Modern Drummer uh, library is, was recorded with the Abbey Rhodes and the Abbey Rhodes series of drums. Um, and uh, the modern drummer is supposed to cover, I guess, the 90s and, uh, and 2000s because there's the 80s drummer, 70s drummer, 60s drummer libraries, uh, and then it goes straight into modern, so that's, I guess, got to be the 90s and 2000s. Um, I'm not going to uh, demo the these libraries, the 80s and 70s and 60s, uh, just because I think that they would call for a completely different kind of processing uh, than I've set up for with Pro Tools. I'm really just going for that modern pop rock sound, and that's why I think that these uh, two libraries, the Studio Drummer and the Modern Drummer, kind of complement each other uh, very well um, for that kind of sound. Uh, however, if you're gonna, you know, your your song calls for um, 
a different kind of drum sound, then definitely check out the 60s, 70s, and 80s drummer um, at, from the Abbey Road series. Those are great uh, libraries too. So let me play back this library now. All right, with the, this library, there's actually three snares. Um, so let me load up the second one. Uh, what I noticed with this kit is, is it's a very focused sound, uh, very tight, uh, punchy sound for the drums. Uh, the toms sound really good. Um, and uh, it's a very tight sound uh, that I'm hearing. Um, and so it's great for, uh, you know, anything from from pop to rock, but then also things, uh, you can even get into things that like, uh, funk or anything like that. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of somebody like, uh, Dave Matthews that has that kind of, um, his drummer, uh, is very, plays a lot more complex rhythms. And so having that tight focus sound is important with not a lot of sustain on the tom, not, not a huge room sound. Um, so you can, uh, every single hit that you do, um, can be heard clearly. So that's what this kit I think is good for. Um, let me play the next snare. All right, one more snare on this library. This has got to be some kind of Black Beauty or something like that uh, for the snare. Uh, it takes a second to load up. All right, third snare. All right, so that was the uh, Pearl Kit in the uh, Modern Drummer Library. Let me unload these samples. Switch this one over so it's not getting triggered. Last one I'm going to show you is the Modern White Kit. Uh, this is the uh, DW Kit. you got to remember to go in here and... For this uh, one, I, I found that I didn't really need to uh, to uh, use the game booster, so I'm going to take it out. Well, that loads. All right. So this is, while this is loading. Uh, so this DW kit, I think it uh, complements the Pearl kit pretty well. Uh, and it contrasted in the way that I thought the Pearl kit was uh, very focused in its sound. I think these drums have a much longer sustain um, and uh, is less focused. So I think that depending on your style of music, this one might be uh, uh, a good choice as well. I think that these two kits definitely... Uh, capture the modern um, drum sound. I think that the, the, they're probably the most popular ones um, as far as being recorded. Um, you know, the Yamaha uh, recording custom drum kit's also very popular for being recorded. Uh, I better switch this over so it's on the first snare, gets loaded.
compared to some of the other drum libraries that are out there, um, I think some people will complain that, that you can't mix and match as much um, of the kits as you can in other drum libraries, but really all you need to do, if you want to say, use the cymbals, you really like the cymbals from uh, this drum kit, but you want to use the drums from the Pearl kit, or something like that, all you really need to do is uh, set up, uh, load both of them, and then um, assign in uh, Pro Tools the different uh, MIDI files, so that um, you'd have to have two two tracks and just send the symbols, uh, the MIDI notes, um, to the corresponding uh, uh, contact instrument that you wanted, and then uh, send only the MIDI notes to the um, the other library that you want to just use the drums. So this is loaded now. Uh, let, let me show you the DW kit with the first snare here. Alright, let me switch over to the second snare while that loads. <clears throat> I thought that the, the cymbals kind of had some unique effects here uh, on this um, this library compared to the, the Pearl kit. Um, so that's just something uh, that's a nice feature that there's, you know, not only are they including a China cymbal, a splash cymbal, but the even the crash cymbals sound pretty unique and different between the different libraries. Alright, so this is the second snare with the DW kit. Alright, and lastly I'm going to switch over now to the third snare so you can hear it. Uh, this will take a second to load here. Uh, this one is much deeper snare. It's, it's got wood hoops. It's tuned down. Um, so I think that it's compared to the other ones, the last one had, you know, was a medium to high tuned snare. It had a long ring to it. This one, this snare is very deep. Um, and I think that sound is uh, pretty still popular in music um, depending on the song especially like indie rock or something now um, uses that uh, that low tune snare now so if, if that's what you're looking for uh, this library's got it here you go All right, so that's all the uh, kits I wanted to show you today, guys. Hopefully it gave you an opportunity to hear a variety, variety of the sounds that you can uh, get using Native Instruments uh, drum software. Again, I use the Modern Drummer as well as the Studio Drummer libraries. Um, they're pretty similar in their uh, sound because they're both kind of going for that um, the sound of, of modern drums. Um, they complement each other well because each of the different kits sound a little bit different. On you can use them for different uh, styles of music. Um, you know, if you're going for a big room sound, these libraries have it. If you're going for a tight, punchy sound, you can achieve that as well. Um, I didn't go into a lot of the mixing I'm doing. If you want to uh, learn about how I would uh, my recommendations for mixing drums, check out my other videos. Um, I guess in summary, I would say. You know, Native Instruments doesn't necessarily specialize in drums, but I think that uh, these libraries are are good, um, and I find I use them a lot. Um, 
you know, I have several other drum libraries that are made specially by companies that basically all they do is drum libraries. But I think that Native Instruments did a good job as well. And they're keeping up uh, definitely with the with the other companies that are just uh, just focusing on drums. So I have to commend Native, Native Instruments for that. Uh, and I think one advantage that they uh, have is that they can... Uh, they pair their their drum library with a um, a good suite of effects. So this Guitar Rig Five is a lot more than just uh, an uh, amp simulation software. Um, you have a great set of compressors um, from SoftTube that they uh, decide to collaborate with Native Instruments on. Uh, so that's the VC uh, 160. Um, then there's also an 1176 uh, compressor, and then also a uh, LA 2A compressor. So those are great. There's the SSL bundle um, that you can actually use inside of Contact or you can use it inside of Guitar Rig. Um, some of these effects they started to release as individual plugins. Um, so that's cool. And I think that uh, that's a big advantage for Native Instruments, uh, especially if you uh, check out something like Complete 8 uh, or Complete 8 Ultimate that I've got. Hopefully Native Instruments comes out with Complete 9 soon because uh, I know that there's some more software that I haven't uh, purchased yet. I'm holding out for Complete 9 to pick up. Um, I know a lot of people are doing that. Uh, that also includes some more compressors and stuff like that. So um, I guess that's uh, one of the, the best parts I think about Native Instruments is they've, they've got a whole uh, mixing line of software that you, it's not like you're just picking up their, their drum library and then uh, you got to go out and buy somebody else's uh, mixing plugins for um, for Pro Tools. If you're just getting started mixing drums um, or mixing in general, I think that uh, Native Instru Instrument stuff um, gives you a whole uh, package of stuff that you can use, whether it's for drums, whether it's for guitars, um, whether it's for you know just vocals or anything like that, or mixing in general. That's uh, one of the advantages of native, native Instruments. So I encourage you to check that out. If you've got any questions, recommendations, or comments, feel free to uh, comment on the, the video, and I'll try to respond to them as quickly as I can. Check out my other videos, um, especially if you want to see some tips and tricks on, on how to mix drums if you're not really familiar with that. Um, thanks for uh, checking out the video, and uh, take care, guys.